Scammers are going to be furious at this video. I'm going to show you how just by yourself you can shut down scam and phishing websites potentially within minutes. In this video I'll demonstrate using a real life scam phishing site that I found on Twitter designed to steal Steam accounts. This website had been up for 10 days already and not a single antivirus security company had flagged it yet. But within minutes, I had it flagged by multiple security companies, within hours, nearly a dozen, and within 24 hours, the website was completely blocked by Google Chrome and Edge by default, and within two days, the domain registrar itself had the domain name suspended and taken away from the scammers completely, which is why I'm not worried about showing the domain name here. Still though, don't go to it, you never know in the future. So if you didn't think you could make a difference as just one person, I'll show you how. All you need to do is know the various pages that security companies have for submitting malicious websites and report them. And to be clear, I didn't use any kind of special YouTuber connections to do any of this. I used the same exact public forms that everyone else would, and within one day, a scam site was shut down. So as an overview for this video, first I'll give you a quick explanation on how this particular scam website worked, then I'll show you how to report a malicious URL to over 15 security companies using their pages for doing so, which will basically end up nuking the scam website from orbit. Then I'll give you the results for about how long it took each security company to start flagging the scam site. So for this scam, it's actually getting pretty common recently on Steam, where you get a message from one of your friends whose account has been hijacked though, and the scammer will ask you to go to a website supposedly for some game tournament and asks you to vote for their team. Again, still pretending to be your friend. But on that website, when you go to vote, it prompts you to log in with your Steam account, but it's a fake Steam login window, and it looks pretty convincing. All the links on this window go to the real Steam site, but if you type in any credentials, it will steal them. I've actually seen a couple varieties of this type of website. On this site, it actually pops up a separate browser window, but the URL box just says about blank. On another site, it brought up an entire fake browser window. So this apparent window with Steam as the URL showing is not even a separate browser window at all. Very tricky. Also apparently tricky is it will also steal your Steam Guard credentials. So I just put in a fake login credential and it knew that the login was incorrect. So I wasn't about to type in any real credentials, but I bet that it was actually relaying the login. And if it saw that it was asking for Steam Guard, it would have just asked for that too. And by then it had your login and your Steam Guard code. And I have to say, as far as scam domain names go, fpsleague.com actually seems pretty legit. Now obviously do not go to this website, right now it's down anyways, but you still don't want to knowingly visit a potentially malicious site. As a pro tip, a lot of scam websites use newly registered domain names. They are not up for very long before they get caught and then they just go down. So a good way to tell if a site is kind of suspicious is to look up that registration date using the so-called who is registration data. If it's a common domain extension like .com or .net, you can go to lookup.ican.org and it will tell you the created date. If it's an extension that that site doesn't work on, you can just Google the top level domain extension like .io and then who is lookup and you should be able to find something from there. And I would actually recommend if possible that you just automatically block newly registered domains if you have some kind of service that allows that. Sometimes hardware firewalls, use that, but one service I've been using recently that I just found out about, and this isn't sponsored or anything by the way, but it's called NextDNS, and it lets you add a bunch of filters, including newly registered domains. I'm not gonna get into how to do all that yourself. If you don't know how, maybe ask a friend who's good with computers and they can probably help you. But I just wanted to mention it. I've been using it for about a week and I like it so far. All right, so now let's get to how to actually report a malicious URL, assuming you come across one. So. What you want to probably do is open up Notepad and copy over the URL so you have it. And also what you'll want to do is make a note, a description that you'll submit along with the report to describe what the scam is. So for example, with this website, I wrote a quick thing that says it is a Steam phishing site. If you click on a link such as sign in with Steam at the top, then it will bring up a fake Steam login window. And something like that is detailed enough, just enough where if a human goes to review the site, they'll know why you actually reported it as malicious and they'll be able to easily tell. If possible, you might also want to take a screenshot of the scam part, like the fake pop-up window or something. That 
can sometimes be included with the report. And remember, if you are visiting a known scam website, open it in a sandbox. Windows has a built-in sandbox now that you can open it with. You can also use some kind of virtual machine. And there's also some websites like AnyRun, which you can use a virtual machine online. Like you just type in the URL here and it'll give you a, a quick 60 second virtual machine where you can actually navigate around the site, click on stuff. So you can get a quick screenshot through that. Just, you wanna be sure you're safe. And now I can go through the individual pages for all the security websites, how to report each one. I'm gonna go through them pretty quickly because there are several. And of course, I will put all these links in the description. All right, so the first big one you'll want to report it to is Google Safe Browsing. This will get the website blocked on Chrome. And all you have to do is put in the URL and add a little note describing it. So I'll put that in that I showed you before. And if it doesn't get auto detected, that note will of course help them review it manually. And then you just submit it. The other big one you'll want to report it to is Microsoft and their smart screen filter. This will get it blocked on Edge and Windows and all that. Now you can either log in with your Microsoft account or as a guest. I don't think it really makes a difference, but either way, you'll just put in the URL and then choose phishing or the other one, depending on the website, and then fill out the captcha if you're not logged in and then hit submit. Unfortunately, there is no notes section on this site. I'm not sure why that is, but it is what it is. Also, if you're using an enterprise admin account, you can go into the Microsoft 365 Defender dashboard and you can submit a URL through that. And that does actually let you add a note, but you have to have like a business account so most people won't be able to do that. Next, it's definitely worth trying to report the domain to the registrar and cut it off at the source. Right in the who is info, there should be the registrar's name and abuse contact email. I emailed this one and basically said the same thing as in my other notes. But when you do go to type the domain, don't do it like this, write it something like this with the dot spelled out or whatever, because the first email I tried to send got blocked by Gmail because I guess the domain was already flagged. So you wanna write it out as not a link. In this case, they actually just sent an email back saying, that I actually had to fill out a form on their site, so I did that instead. And about two days later, I noticed the registrar had set the name servers to show that it was actually suspended. And there were also some new domain statuses applied which corroborate that. Though not every registrar may show suspended name servers like this. Also, not every registrar is very good at taking down sites, but it's still worth it. But usually I found after Google and Microsoft start blocking the site that the scammers often just shut the site down themselves anyway. Next up, we have FortiGuard. And here you type in the URL for the site and hit enter or the search icon. And you'll see that here it lists the category as recently registered and a security risk group, but we want it flagged fully as phishing. So click request a review and then for suggest a category, choose phishing or whatever the site is. And if you're able, take a screenshot of the site or the malicious part, like the fake login window. A lot of these sites block scanners that are automatic. So you'll notice Virus Total actually returned a 404 because it must have somehow blocked it. So putting in a screenshot, a lot of times will help with a manual review. Then just put in your name and email, you'll get a notification on what they do. And then for company, you can just put self. And then for comment, add that same note and then hit submit and you should see a confirmation message at the top. Next, we have BrightCloud. Just paste the site in the box that says look up URL or IP and then hit look up. The reputation will probably be uncategorized or suspicious because it's a new domain, but again, we want it fully flagged. So look on the left for the request a change section. Put in the URL, then click on I would like to suggest a category. In this case, we want phishing or other frauds. Then click done and then put in your email and you can leave the product box empty, then add your note and then submit. And then you should see a confirmation message. Next is CRDF Threat Lab Center. So at the top, hover over URLs and then click submit malicious URLs. This form is super basic. It just asks you for your email address and a list of URLs. So don't put anything except links in here, no notes or anything. And then agree to the terms, then submit the request and you'll see a confirmation number. Now I have found this website often on the first attempt might not catch a scam site. I guess it's automated. So in my case, I got an email about 30 minutes after submitting it and it says no malicious sites were found. So what you'll wanna do then is follow the link in the email to the report that they give you. And then next to the URL you submitted, you can check the misclassification box and then click continue the reporting process. 
Then here, they finally do let you add an explanation in this box. So be sure to put your note and that it has enough details for when they manually review it. Then just hit submit and it'll say successfully reported. In the two times I submitted a website and they didn't catch it at first, I appealed and both times they then caught it after that. So you might have to do that. Next up, we have Netcraft. So just put in the URL of the site along with your email. And I actually forgot to do this, but be sure to select add further details and then add your explanation and then hit report malicious URL. Fortunately, even without the details, it still caught it and flagged it automatically. But if they send you an email that says no threats were found, just hit check results and then on the left, click report an issue. And then next to the URL, select misclassification and ideally upload a screenshot for evidence. But then either put the same note you did before or maybe add a more detailed one in the misclassification report reason and then hit submit issue and they'll re-review it probably manually. And I did have to do this one time and they did catch it when re-reviewing. As a cool side note for this website, they actually have a leaderboard for who submits the most malicious URLs the first time and they even have some prizes if you submit enough, which is kind of cool. Moving on for Palo Alto Networks, on the test a site page, just put in the URL and hit search. And it may have a few categories already like newly registered, high risk, but nothing confirmed malicious or phishing. So click request a change, then put in your note and then find the proper category and select it, put in your email and hit submit. For ESET, they have a report a phishing page form. So put in the URL, then the note, and it also asks you for the organization being targeted. So in this case, the site is stealing Steam logins, so I put Steam. Also, some sites like this one may require you to add the HTTPS to the beginning of the URL, so just be aware of that. And then hit submit, and they don't ask you for an email, so you won't get a notification if they flag it. For Trend Micro, you put the URL in the box that says, is it safe, and then hit check now. And here it just says untested and newly observed as the category. So hit reclassify request, and then here are two options. So just click the button under where it says for home users, etc. And then on this page for safety rating, select the dangerous option under content, select suggest a different category. Then under internet security, choose phishing or whatever it is. Then you can just leave these two check boxes alone, but in the box for comments, add your note to explain it and then enter email address and hit okay. Now hold on because there's one more step. For this one, you need to actually go to the email they send you and click a confirmation link before they actually scan it. And also check your spam box. In my case, it was in there. So then once you go to the confirmation link, it will actually submit for scan. For Bitdefender, on this page, you'll want to scroll down to the submission form and then for category, select false negative. Then put in your name, your email, in our case, select URL and paste it in. Then for description, as usual, put the note and hit submit. And you should see a green confirmation message show up. For McAfee, this page is for checking a single URL. This box will ask you what product you're using. Just select the real-time database option. Here it's at the top. And then put in the link and hit check URL. You can see it says it's currently uncategorized. So down lower for category one, select phishing. And you don't need to select all the categories. Just one is fine. Then put in your note and hit submit URL for review and it should show a confirmation page. For the company Forcepoint, in this box we put the URL and I guess you can only report five a day or something, but anyway, hit analyze. Currently it says the threat level is low and is only classified as newly registered website, so hit suggest a different classification. In the suggest dropdown, the phishing option is actually called security, phishing and other frauds, so select that, then put in your note, then click submit and there doesn't seem to be any kind of confirmation message, but it still should have worked. For Semantic on their site review request page, first put in the URL and then hit check category. In this case, it just says the URL has not been rated and lets you fill out a form. For filtering service, there are a bunch here. I wasn't even sure which one, so I just picked Norton Safe Web, but I kind of assume that they're gonna propagate the malicious URLs to all their products anyway. For category, it's just phishing, and then put in your email address, and then in the comment box, your note, and hit submit for review. To submit to spam 404, this one is very simple. Just put in the URL and the explanation note, and that's it, hit submit. For Kaspersky on their threat intelligence portal, go to the lookup tab, 
then put in the URL and hit enter to search. We can see it is not categorized. So on the right, hit the submit to reanalyze button. And here, just put in your email address and then it lets you put in a comment to explain. So then hit submit and you should see a little confirmation message. Next up, we have Cisco's Talos Intelligence Service. This one actually requires signing up for a free account to report a URL, but it is actually probably worth it because Cisco is such a big company with so many customers. Anyway, on the Reputation Center page, you can put in a URL or even just an IP and then hit the search icon. And here it says unknown reputation and no category, but if you have an account, you can click the buttons to submit a reputation or categorization ticket. However, one thing to note is for the categorization option, very strangely, there is no option for phishing or malware or anything. It's just regular website categories, which I thought was weird. So instead, what you have to do is go to the reputation change option. And then in the dropdown here, select suggest threat category and then it lets you select stuff like phishing and malware. So do that, and then you set the platform to Talos Intelligence, which is the only option. Then in the comments, put the usual note and click submit. Finally, I want to mention this one called Fish Tank. Now this would be a good one to submit to because it's used by so many other services. However, they require a account to submit and for some reason they have registrations closed right now. So I guess just check back on this one or if anyone knows a guy who knows a guy so I can get an account, maybe just send me an email or DM me on Twitter or something. Oh, and one final thing though, you can actually sign up for a VirusTotal account and that will let you vote on a website and also leave a comment. So if anyone scans it, maybe even if it isn't detected yet, you, they can still see your comment about it. So now after reporting all of these, we can get into the results for what happened. I'll show you the virus total scan results and then I'll show you as accurate as I can the exact amount of time that each of these security vendors took to actually flag it. So I rescanned on virus total after about an hour and awesome, there were already four vendors that were flagging it. But surprisingly, even though virus total had Google safe browsing showing it as clean, on the actual Google site to check a domain status, it does say it had flagged it as unsafe and it was the same day. So I'm sure it was from when I submitted. And this was even the case six hours later and even the next day, Virus Total is still saying it was clean. So good to know that Virus Total can be pretty delayed with some vendors. And do realize that Virus Total won't actually show the latest results unless you hit rescan. You can see here that it'll say it was scanned hours ago and it'll just show you those results. Also, if you do a scan and it flags something new, be sure to also rescan it on both the HTTP and HTTPS version of the URL. For some reason, VirusTotal shows these as separate and you will want people to see the flagged results, whether they look on the HTTP or HTTPS version and they might not know that you have to actually rescan it. After rescanning a couple hours later, eight vendors were now flagging it. And after about six hours, 10 of them were flagging it. Now, I do want to mention something that I just learned, that even if Google Safe Browsing flags a website, which apparently it did very shortly after I submitted it, it won't be blocked in Google Chrome right away unless you have enhanced protection on in the settings. I just had standard protection on, and you'll notice it says Chrome may send URLs to Safe Browsing and checks if the malicious URL is stored locally, but for enhanced protection, it checks all URLs, I guess. So you might want to enable that. I will say, however, that by by the next day, within 24 hours, it was blocking with standard protection by default. And also Microsoft Edge was blocking it with their smart screen. I'm not sure exactly how long this took because I was asleep, but it was within 24 hours. But I will note that even though both Google and Microsoft were blocking these, VirusTotal still was not showing them as being flagged when I rescanned it, which was kind of weird. Anyway, I was doing my best to keep track of exactly how long each security company would take to flag it, whether by sending an email or just showing up on VirusTotal, and here are the results. Though I will point out that it seems that for this site, fortunately, a lot of the companies were able to automatically detect it, I guess with an automated scam. Other times, it may take longer if it had to be manually reviewed to confirm, so don't necessarily expect some of these instant results, but it could be. So now, hopefully you all are scam website destroying machines, and the next time you see a scam website and it just fills you with rage, you can do something about it and take them down. Definitely give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I put a, quite a bit of testing and work into this one, so I'd really appreciate it. Also, let me know down in the comments if there's maybe other services that let you submit to it that I didn't mention that it would be good. Or you can let me know if you did this and it worked out. And if you want to subscribe, I try to make videos about twice a week, Wednesday and Saturday, so it should be worth it. 
If you want to keep watching, the next video I'd recommend is one where I was talking about some new scams this year. So I'll put that link right here if you want to click on it. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.